Hey yo, what's going on my math party people? Anderson here, your ASVAB coach, and let's talk about proportions. Because proportions, they come in a variety of different types of problems, but there's one cardinal rule you have to follow. I'm gonna teach you that cardinal rule, but before we begin, I do wanna make sure that you understand that there is a class on this tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern. We're gonna be going over proportions, all the types of problems, and all the strategies and techniques. That way you can have a better shot at acing the ASVAB and getting the military job you deserve. Remember, Eight out of 10 recruits failed to ASVAB their first time, so we don't wanna be in that position. Make yourself smarter every day, go ahead and join. It's part of my all access program, my ASVAB all access program. Blah, blah, blah. So go ahead, check it out if you wanna join and let's have fun. But let's go ahead and get started here. So, you know, this is gonna be a proportion problem and I'm gonna walk you through this. And there's one rule you have to follow, one rule. It's this, write this down. It's gonna be compare the same things in the same way. Go ahead, pause and rewind it or listen again. Compare the same things in the same way. If you follow that rule with proportions, you can solve literally any proportion problem there is, and you can also solve percent problems a lot quicker too. I'll show you that in another video. But let's go ahead and get started here. My number one rule when it comes to word problems in general is to start with the question. So right here, how many items can be expected to work properly? That's the question. That right there is the question, not for every 100 items tested. No, 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 no. I said that in English and Spanish. No, what we have to look at here is the question first because you wanna know what the objective is. You don't wanna confuse yourself with information that really doesn't matter until you know what it's there for. So start with the question, how many items can be expected to work properly? And right there, you know that your goal here is to find out the number that work properly. The number that works properly or work properly. Either way, I'm not teaching grammar right now. So properly right there. Blank, blank uh, items. Right there, nice and easy, right? Before we continue, just wanna take a quick moment to thank you for watching this video. And all I ask is that you please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. That way more people just like you can see these videos. But on top of that, if you're looking for more ways to practice the right way and raise your score with guidance without stressing, then I really wholly 100% recommend my ASVAB All Access program. The program, long story short, helps you watch, practice, and master every topic from the word knowledge to paragraph comprehension, arithmetic reasoning, math knowledge, general science. It's there and it's designed to help you succeed with practicing the right way. So with that said, check out the link in the description to see how it all works because you're gonna have ways to learn in every way that you prefer. And you get my guidance and my support all the way until you pass. So don't hesitate, stop feeling nervous and being anxious and letting yourself feel that way when there's a solution waiting right here for you. Check out the link in the description, that way you see how it works, and then reach out to me if you have any questions about it. Let's get back to raising our scores. So now, the next step here is to go ahead and now go through the information and see what information is related to the items that work properly. That's it, just start there. Because we're gonna start sorting through and seeing what the relationships are. But if you look at the information before the, uh, the question, then you don't know what it's there for and you might get stuck on information that doesn't matter. So let's go back into it, let's get it done. Step two, collect the information. And we see that for every 100 items tested, three are faulty. So we see 100 tested, we got three that are faulty, okay? And then in the next sentence, it says 50,000 items are tested. Okay, sounds good. 50,000 tested. And then they ask how many can be expected to work properly? So, okay, blank work properly. So, again, what was that rule that I just talked about maybe like a minute and a half ago, two minutes ago? Compare the same things in the same way. If you do that, you're gonna be fine. This is gonna be a lot of fun actually because that's all, that's all proportions are. They are equivalent comparisons. That's all they are. Equivalent comparisons compare the same things in the same way. Did I say it enough? Compare the same things in the same way. All right, here we go. So we're looking for how many work properly. We understand that. But if we were to go ahead and set up this proportion like this, if we did 100 over three equals 50,000 over, let's just go ahead and say X, 
You can use I for items or P for properly working, whatever you want to do. But if you set it up like this and you take your final answer and you say that that's the number, that's the correct answer, that's going to be wrong because of this. Watch this. If I zoom in, or not zoom in, the 100 represents the number that are tested. We have 100 that are tested. The 50,000, also the number that are tested. So you see here at the tops, at the numerators, we definitely see that we have number tested and a number tested. So, so far, we're comparing the same things in the same way, and that's a good thing. But if we look down here, the three and the X, well, the three, number that are faulty, and the X is the number that worked properly. We are no longer comparing the same things in the same way. Watch, faulty, and then the ones that work properly. That's not good. That's not good. We're not comparing the same things in the same way. If you were to solve this proportion, the number that you would get would actually represent what faulty, the number of faulty items at that factory. And so because of that, we have to understand that if we don't set it up correctly, the answer is wrong automatically. You would have gotten, I think it would have been 1500. I believe it would have been 1500 if you would have used that proportion. But let's go ahead and say you made that mistake, right? Let's go ahead and say that you made that mistake and you go ahead and solve this proportion. Let's go ahead and say that you, you know, cross multiply and then you divide. So three times 50,000, that would give us 150,000. And then over here, if you were to go ahead and do the 100 times X, that's 100 X. Okay, great. So once there, what you would do is divide both sides by 100 to solve the problem. So then you would receive X equals, cross that out, cross that out, and you have 1,500, 1,500 items. And how many of those we would think that it's properly? No, it's actually faulty. It's actually 1,500 faulty items because that's what its counterpart represents. That's not what it would be. But again, there is a way to fix this. So this would give you the faulty items, but here's how you can fix it. The way you can fix it is like this. And this is actually a pretty simple, pretty straightforward line of thinking. Think about it like this. If 100 that were tested, out of which three were faulty, if three are faulty out of 100, well then how many work properly? 97. Because if there's 100 total, three of them are bad, well the rest are good, 97, right? What did we do there? We just subtracted. And that's exactly what we'll do here. We have 1,500 that are faulty, out of how many? 50,000. And so, whether this is your first or 50th YouTube video of mine, it doesn't matter. Why don't you join me for a live class? That way you can ask questions, raise your score, and get the job you want for free. Again, I host classes once a week on Zoom, typically on Mondays. So go ahead and click the link up there or down here somewhere, register for free, and you get my free practice test that has video solutions so you can learn from every mistake. That's what it's all about here, my party people. I want to help you succeed, so don't hesitate. Sign up for free, and then let's get back to this problem here. Let's keep raising our scores. So we have 50,000. We have 50,000 that were tested. If we subtract the 1,500 that were faulty, we will get the number that works properly. And this is why comparing the same things in the same way is so important, because even if you have the wrong setup, you can use it to your advantage and say, oh, hey, I see that. I can still use that number to get the right answer. I know I'm not done yet. So if you subtract 1,500 from 50,000, I can just subtract 1,000 first, 49,000, then subtract 500. That'd be 48,500. 48,500 work properly. Right there. And that's how you can use the main principle of proportions to your advantage every single time. Answer is D and we're all good. And so again, if you are watching up to this point in the video, two things. One, all I ask is that you like this video so that way we can keep getting supported. Go ahead and comment your favorite part or just a thanks if you want to, that's up to you. But subscribe to the channel. That way we can go ahead and keep pumping videos out for you and everybody else who wants to ace the ASVAB. And the second thing is, again, we have a class on this tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern and we have plenty of classes at least three times a week that you can join with my ASVAB All Access program. It's the main way that my students raise their scores because I help you lower test anxiety and build confidence that you can take with you right up until test day and get the score you want.
So if you want to learn more about that, my phone number is in the description of this video along with the link to the class. That way you can hit me up whenever you need me. With that said, all love, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. And before you go, if you like what you saw and you want to raise your score with thousands of practice problems just like that, so you can lower that test anxiety, raise that confidence, go to this link right here to check out the full program. There's a video that shows you exactly how it works, but you're going to get lessons, guided practice, worksheets, speed drills, and everything that you need to feel supported from day one all the way until you pass. Again, I'm Coach Anderson, and I'll see you soon.